Hello and welcome to Tessa's house. Today's blog will be a little different because we won't be sitting around the kitchen table drinking coffee. And so I wanted to just spend time explaining two different types of tracheostomy tubes. I'll explain the function of each and the various advantages and disadvantages of each one. What you see me doing here in this part of the video is going through my personal museum of old tracheostomy tubes, which I was supposed to throw away because we couldn't clean them anymore. But I keep them around to demonstrate to other people who may be working for Tessa what it is, how to use it, and why we use it. And so you guys get to see my museum too. Now what I'm holding up here is actually what I call a dinosaur. This is a tracheostomy tube with what's called a low pressure cuff. You can see this big nasty bunch of plastic around the shaft here. That's called the cuff. And I'll explain what that does in a minute. But you can see how it sticks out, gets in the way, and you can bet mucus collects on that and makes it very difficult for someone to talk. An interesting thing about that old dinosaur sewer pipe in my hand there is I saw the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, William Rehnquist, had one of those when he was still walking around a few years ago. Now I'm demonstrating how the cuff inflates, and I'm using a different kind of tube just to show you another feature of these tubes. These holes in the back of this are called fenestrations, and I'll explain a little later why I think they're pretty useless, at least for our application. You may find them useful in your application, but I can't understand why. Now you can see in my right hand there's a syringe. This syringe is used for inflating the cuff. There, it's got air in it now, and when I show you with the respiratory tubing, what that does when it's inflated, you'll understand a little bit more about why it's needed for ventilator patients. Now, take the fitting off the end, don't need that. We take our tube. This tubing in my right hand represents the human trachea. Now I just switched hands and I'm inserting the tracheostomy tube into the so-called trachea. And then I'm inflating the cuff, remove the syringe, and as you can see the cuff is tight enough in there to hold it in, but that's not the purpose of it. The purpose is not to hold it in the trachea, it's to make positive air pressure down the trachea and not up out the mouth. So that the lungs fill with air instead of the mouth blowing out the air that the lungs desperately need. That's why you're using a ventilator, right? And the cuff sits there and holds it in the trachea. Oh, hello, Mr. Fly. Thank you for stopping by. Now with this one, I'm just explaining what a disposable inner cannula is. That thing I'm inserting there isn't a disposable inner cannula. It's called an obturator. I don't, the obturator is to help you insert the thing into the patient, but those tubes are so hard that it doesn't matter, you don't need one. But that's the way the inner cannula or the inner tube works inside that tube. It just goes in there to keep it sterile and you change it every day. But if you're gonna use the fenestration holes to speak, you're getting the inside of the tube dirty anyway. And another thing they won't tell you about those tubes is, on some people, I don't know, maybe everybody, but eventually after several days of using it, the inside of the tube starts to smell like a gym shoe. So I really can't see an advantage of having a sterile tube inside there when you've still got germs. You're just covering them up a little bit, but they can still be leaking out through cracks and crevices. And so it's kind of worthless. Now, this other tube, you can see, yeah, that's my favorite type of tube. You see how I'm petting the box and stroking it? This is a very good tube. You'll see why here in a minute. It's much slimmer. It's actually softer. It's made of silicon instead of vinyl. And actually around the shaft, it does have a cuff, but you can't see it. In comparison, the other cuff is a big trash bag. And this one is so sheer that when it is inflated, you'll be able to see light through it. In fact, it's so sheer you don't use air. I'm using air here for demonstration purposes. But when it's inflated, when the patient is using it, you must use sterile water not even salinated water. I'm just giving it a few inflations so that you can see how it works and it does get big enough to fill the trachea plus when it's deflated 
it shrinks back to the size of the tube because it is a very tight rubber. And now that rubber can spring leaks, and that's one of the disadvantages to that type of tube. One other ostensible disadvantage of the tight to shaft cuff, the high pressure cuff, it has no disposable inner cannula and it must be cleaned every day. Hospitals don't like that because it's labor intensive, but I'll show you next time on the next blog that it takes six minutes to clean and reprocess according to the manufacturer's instructions. So it's your throat, you decide.